Greetings, Tate uh, Ramutla. How are you doing? Doing very well, Pachan. And how are you? I'm very well. I'm very well. Good to see you. Thank you very much. And greetings to George. George, greetings to you. Gentlemen, uh, greetings. Can you hear me today? <laughs> loud, yeah, loud. Very well, very well, George. Very well. How are you? Very well. How are you, folks? I am well. That's beautiful. Oh, we well. Looking forward to a wonderful show. Indeed. Indeed. And how has been your day? Well, today I had a very wonderful day because I decided to rest uh, following uh, the trip that I undertook on Sunday. To Costa, it was a church business, so it was quite a long trip. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, okay. I traveled also over the weekend. Yes, I was. I was at uh, Northwest. Oh, in Northwest. Okay. So, so you where did you travel to, George? I was in a place called Fre French Hook, French Hook in Western Cape. Ah, oh, wonderful. The wine lands. The wine lands, but it was cold. So, <laughs> yeah, but uh, very nice, really nice place. Beautiful. You want to go there in, the, in, in, in summer, not when it's cold. I wonder if it's easy to predict the seasons of Cape Town because... One hour is summer, second hour is winter, and then <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how you plan for for the uh, Cape Town, Western Cape weather, especially. Mm. But even even Hauteng has been a bit uh, funny. I mean, we're still cold in in October. Yeah, absolutely. This one has caught us unaware. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, that's wonderful. Uh, welcome, uh, Tivesh. Good to see you. Sounds like we haven't seen each other for a very long time, and yet it's only one week. Uh, evening, Sam. Uh, evening, George. Yeah, the absence, because we're used to doing it for 40 episodes, uh, you will notice the gap when we don't meet each other, Sam. Yeah, yeah. I, I must, I must say, I felt it. <laughs> how are you, Davis? I'm good, George. How are you? Mm, uh, all right. A bit cold, but uh, <laughs> complaining about cold in October. Mm, mm. It wasn't as bad as last week, though. Yeah, sure. Definitely, it's definitely getting better, getting warmer. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I guess we can start. We are glad to be here. It is uh, Unit 31, Conduct 26, Planning, Organizational and Implementation Skills. Uh, this follows on to our last time's uh, unit, which was uh, Unit 30, Conduct number 25, and that was about the aftercare and customer service. Um, maybe we could remind each other of the themes that we have just covered there and link them into now you have, you are ready in terms of servicing your client, but you need to deliver the product. And uh, every delivery of a product, in this case, the show, starts with you planning. And then, of course, making sure you are organized and uh, ultimately deliver a quality product. Those are the skills we want to look at today. But let me officially welcome the listeners. Uh, greetings. Uh, this is Sam Zima, and I'm joined by the co-hosts, uh, Franz Ramutla, uh, George Mutenda Zamera, and uh, Divesh Motilal. We hope to welcome other colleagues as time goes on. They will greet you in a few minutes, uh, seconds, to just check in and uh, let you know how they are feeling. 
this is Comeza Radio Worldwide, the mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. Our shows are based on the principle we call the idea. We inform, entertain, develop, and educate, empower, and support, associate, and network. That's the idea. This is the series uh, specifically for train the trainer or specifically for the trainers, those who have mastered the digital online streaming uh, do's and don'ts, and we are sharpening our skills and preparing ourselves to be able to be dependable facilitators or trainers of those who want to acquire these skills, the do's and don'ts of digital online streaming which might be audio or visual, video, but the do's and don'ts apply. And of course, to many other uh, um, uh, roles, they do apply because it's all about execution. And today we're talking exactly about that, planning, organizational and implementation skills. And we, we will share with you some of the lessons we have made during the actual training of ourselves where we were made to work through a template in preparing our guests and for our shows. So let me hold it here and invite the colleagues to greet you, check in, and then of course a bit of reflection in terms of, or a bit of uh, anticipation in terms of the topic. Anyone ready? George, over to you. Are you there, George? You muted. Oh, hello. Yes, I can see. Yeah, welcome, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. It's always a pleasure to be here every Tuesday uh, and to share our thoughts and views with the listeners and we don't we don't take your time for granted we know that uh, you have other things that you could be doing but you are listening to this show so we thank you very very much and as we talk about the do's and don'ts uh, applying to the online broadcasting they also apply across the board so today We'll be talking about uh, planning, organizational, and implementation skills. And these will apply in, in your businesses as well. And so it's, it's worthwhile to listen and to share your views. We would appreciate it if you, on, in the chat, put in what your, what your views are. Uh, we're here to learn both ways. So we share what we know and you share what what you have. So really, I'm an executive and leadership coach, and I really appreciate this time uh, that we share with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, George. Welcome again, once again, and I look forward to your input as always. Thank you so much. Divesh? Yes, thank you very much, Sam. Uh, evening to you, Sam and George, uh, to France, as well as to our listeners. And uh, my name is Divesh Motilal. I'm an engineer by profession. Uh, I'm also a resident DJ at Kometsa uh, Online. And uh, indeed, as George had uh, iterated, that uh, not only tonight's topic, but uh, every single topic that we deal with uh, on a weekly basis has its place not only on the digital online streaming mastery area which our program focuses in on but it's also applicable in your business in your personal lives from an individual uh, perspective as well so yes indeed i i am interested in our discussion today and i'm hoping that our listeners out there can apply some of the knowledge and skills that we share uh, to use it for whatever purposes that they best uh, see it fatigue into. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank, thanks, Divesh. Uh, good to see you back. Um, 
we are indeed looking forward to the insights that we'll be sharing. And, and of course, thinking about the many areas in which these insights apply. Thank you so much. Uh, let's uh, give uh, uh, Franz Ramutla the opportunity to check in and greet the listeners and uh, sh- share with us his anticipation as well. Adramut. Good evening, uh, colleagues. Good evening, listeners. Uh, as Prof. Samuel said, I am Franz uh, Makolove Ramutla, uh, the former anchor of uh, Brasem's book, Holistic Career Development Coaching and Mentorship Perspective, a former president of the South African Black Social Workers Association, and the former director of uh, in the Gauteng Department of Social Development, responsible for strategy, policy, research, and stakeholder relations. Uh, currently, I'm the C- CEO for Cometa, CEO, CEO for Tomaco Consulting, and and and, and, and projects. Tonight, as Brasem has uh, indicated, we are. Following up on our previous um, show, where we were looking at customer service and customer care, now we are transitioning to the product development that is informed by planning, organization, and implementation skills. As a social worker by profession, today I was just relaxing and and checking on the topic and uh, uh, the 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 top the lineup of the topic, trying to establish uh, as a social worker by profession what will be my entry point, because more often than not we are not online. But uh, since the COVID time, we were online, so I found relevance for today that uh, there were numerous numerous products that we were developing during COVID time, using um, the, the the teams. Uh, platform. So tonight, uh, I think uh, we will be, I'll be ready for us to contribute towards developing a product as informed by planning organizational and implementational skills. Thank you. And uh, thank you so much, Marco Love, um, for the perspective and the introduction. Indeed, uh, perhaps we should start slowly by just looking at the three key words that are in the topic itself, um, planning, organizing, and implementation. These are big words, but these are the things we do every day, I guess. So let's simplify it for ourselves. George, do you want to simplify for ourselves in a more practical manner when we talk about planning and either at the individual level or organizational level or project level? What does it really actually entail? And what is planning? And why is it so important? Okay. Um, so it, in coaching, which uh, I'm a coach, and we work with uh, individuals to clarify their goals, to clarify their objective and planning means literally putting down the steps that you are going to take to achieve an objective so you put in sequential order when this happens that will happen when that happens that will happen and they say even in biblical times that success of any project starts with a good plan when we have no plan, uh, I'm sure you've had uh, speakers say, oh, you're planning to fail. Because when you don't plan, you are going to work on your uh, business by chance. You, you, you don't have one step after the next, after the next. And that's huge. So in a simple form, Sam, that what, that's what plans are about. Hmm. Hmm. I guess uh, 
uh, George, uh, even with our daily life, day-to-day -day activities that we do, uh, you do find it difficult to focus if you just wake up and you didn't even have an idea what you were going to be doing first and followed by what. So can it be that planning applies also to our individual daily life and what could be the practical examples for people not to think that ah, this is just for business? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, in fact, I think I think the two are very much uh, uh, related. If you don't plan your life, you are unlikely to be able to plan <laughs> in your business because it's a habit, isn't it? Uh, you are putting together the steps of what you are going to do. For instance, most people will say to you, most coaches will say, every Sunday before you begin the week, you sit down and say, okay, what is my week going to look like? Monday will look like this Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then what will happen in the Monday? Again, you have your pointers there. That way, you don't get distracted and 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 you know be be what what's the word I'm looking for? The wind doesn't throw you left and right. You you literally know exactly what you are going to do. Sure, you may have to change here and there because life happens, but essentially you have a broad picture of where you're going, how you're going to do it. And there's a saying that says the devil is in the detail, isn't it? I have a big goal. I'm going to be a big billionaire, but the devil is in the detail. How do you get there? Mm. I like the example you give of uh, every Sunday before your week start, you need to sit down and say, how is my week looking like? So mm. that is the same as looking into your diary for the entire week and have an overview of what is, is planned for you if you have somebody planning it for you. But the drilling down, it could be planning could mean taking each day one by one and try to understand what each day requires from you. And I guess interrogating yourself whether you are ready, George. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the key is when you have a plan in place, you are unlikely to be distracted too much because you know what you need to do. Hmm. So it's a behavioral thing to... to it's a behavioral to... thing. And an engineer like my brother, Devish, there, if, if an engineer doesn't plan, ah, oh, my goodness me. <laughs> Maybe let's hear a comment from Devish there. Yeah. Yes. Uh, exactly. That's a very good one. Yes, indeed, George. Uh, yes, Sam. Uh, just to add on to some of the uh, uh, comments that uh, George has shared, yes, uh, planning is definitely a process. Firstly, that uh, is important that our listeners understand that uh, uh, it's a process. It's not something that just happens uh, when you wake up and then your plan is already done. You have to go through certain steps, as George has iterated, to get to your plan. Uh, so the process involves setting goals and defining what actions uh, you would need to achieve those goals. And then, of course, to mobilize or allocate uh, certain resources that you need in order to execute those actions and achieve your goals. So the end is, as we had also outlined in the previous uh, show, the uh, module unit number 30, uh, where it was very important to have your goals set out. Uh, and those goals could uh, go across um, areas of life, uh, business, as well as what we focus in on our modules in terms of digital online streaming uh, mastery, Sam. Mm -hmm. So everything starts with plan. Yes, uh, and and our listeners, our regulars uh, would would know that we have always stressed the importance of planning. Doesn't matter which element uh, we focus in on in terms of the digital online streaming um, uh, mastery journey, 
uh, planning definitely is the starting point, the process that you need to go into, no matter which element that you are focusing in on, Sam. Mm. Beautiful. So, so it's a beautiful, it's a very good behavior to to practice, you know. You you, you should take it in the Teramutla to a level where if you haven't really thought about this thing that you're about to do now, you should feel so uncomfortable that you'll never do it again, that you find yourself doing something that you have never applied your mind to or that you have never actually put down in a form of a plan and anticipated what could go wrong. And what if, you know, the beautiful question, what if, uh, so that you are not rattled and uh, finding yourself being directionless. Uh, any reflections from your side based on the inputs we just had from the colleagues there? Yes, indeed, uh, planning is very um, important because it informs the success or the failure of, of, of the project. So if I'm to put it into the context, um, in the work that we have been doing uh, annually, we have been celebrating World Social Work Day uh, within the global agenda for social work and social for social work and social development so uh, we would form a, a planning team to make sure that uh, we are in line with the theme for for that year every year there is a theme and therefore we will make sure that all the stakeholders in social development are involved so the 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 organizing team or the planning mm. team will make sure that uh, we we in, we involve all the stakeholders and will make sure that uh, we unpack the theme and within the team we are we allocate different guest speakers yeah, and then from the guest speakers mm. and then we arrange because it was during the COVID time. We arrange the, we agree on the people that will be on our uh, team's platform. And we also uh, make sure that uh, to make sure that everybody in terms of the stakeholders are involved, we have different, we allocate different venues where our colleagues, social work colleagues from the government and from non-government organizations will also participate. Yeah, that will be the our planning part before we go into it. It is the mm. planning and organizing part before we go into implementation. Thanks. Mm. So, if is, I could... is this yes, George? So uh, no, I, I'm just looking. I, I put a note here some way back, and then say that planning is a process of deciding what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and who should do it. Wow. So it's it's what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and who should do it. Beautiful. Mm. What, how, when, who? Yes, and that who may be you, may be a colleague in your business, maybe, but you 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 have structured it. Mm. Mm. That there's a very it looks very systematic way of looking at project or program or event you are about to go into, and 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 I'm sure all of us have been involved in a planning for weddings or, or family gatherings. Mm. I'm sure these are the questions that always come from whoever is a member of that team. Who's going to do this? When must this happen? What do we do? That's need? right. Yeah. So you have just put it nicely to say that's a simplified way of looking at it. Thank you so much for that because uh, I, I, I wanted us to get to the simplicity in such a way that even the non-business people can actually understand that <laughs> these things that we do discuss when we are planning to have a wedding or a birthday party and 
or even a funeral is actually that. But the, so, so George, that suggests that the first step is to call a meeting of the of the members of that planning team. Because yes, you can't it, ask these questions in the air. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's uh, guys. What are we going to do, and how yeah. do we do it? Where should yeah. we do it by? And actually, in this room, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? It's really goal setting, uh, and, and and obviously, it's it's to do. Then the goals must be smart, as you know. I like talking about smart goals. Right? It must be specific. Yeah. It must be measurable. It must be achievable and uh, relevant and time bound but planning is is that it's putting a structure to the to your to 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 the way to your objectives this is where you want to go this is how we get there well, so the the beginning of the process uh, as divesh was explaining is step 1 which is assemble the team <laughs> <laughs> call, call, decide on the time and the venue where we're going to sit and say we are here about planning. That's right. Oh, that's right. And of course, the important thing, Sam, as I said earlier, life happens. So in in that planning, there must be something that 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 accepts that we must be able to adapt to any changes that happen. But at least we know a structure. This is what we're going to do. And then, obviously, being able to adjust and adapt as we go along. Thank you so much, colleagues. You have answered it so nicely. So it is a process. It is answering those four questions that George has put forward. It is about setting the goals, defining the the the, the steps that needs to be followed. As Divesh said, you also is about uh, deciding on the on the resources, mobilizing those resources. Make sure that there is a spreadsheet that is indicating how those resources are going to be allocated. And then we now have a plan. So the product of planning is a plan. <laughs> yes. <it's> a... <laughs> yeah, the product is a plan. <laughs> you end up with a plan. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so if you don't have a plan, that means you have not done the planning. If you have done the planning and there's no plan that you didn't know, then you didn't do a very good plan. It, of course, it might it might, might not necessarily be written, but you should be able to speak to it. Now think about the show, George. I said, George, you're gonna run the show next week, and uh, before you even answer, I think what will go into your mind is you say, "Can I do it? Do I know how to do it? Do I have time to do it? Do you have resources?" Do I have if, you are, if you are cultured to think about plan, because because the plan I think uh, gives you the ability to say yes or no. That's right. That in fact, the plan will actually uh, help you to decide in terms of time frames and all that, because as, as Devish has said, once we must look at your resources, then your resources will say, oh well, maybe you can do it this month or next month or whenever. But those decisions become uh, easier once you are putting a structure around it. Mm. Beautiful. Divesh, let's, let's apply it now. Let's, let's talk about the planning for your next show, next month, next week. Let, let's speak to the practicality now. You are, you are hosting a show. Either you are, yeah, you're going to host a show and uh, we want you to just speak to nothing else but the plan. If the planning of the show. Indeed, Sam. Uh, but before I delve into that, I just want to touch on a few areas where we would adapt. Uh, like you were speaking, uh, you asked George for a uh, example where we would possibly use planning and for what value proposition we could gain. Uh, when we talk about digital streaming, uh, Areas that we'd want to ensure that planning helps is areas such as the quality, uh, whether it's the quality of the guest that you're going to bring onto the show, the quality of the content in terms of what you want to produce and share with your guests. Those are areas where the planning is of utmost importance that 
you would make sure that your quality control is taken care of. Uh, again, uh, in other modules that we dealt with in terms of selection of the platform, selection of the, uh, the, the partner, the radio show, uh, the studio, uh, we, we then talk about technical readiness. So again, there it involves planning to make sure that all the elements that's needed if it's a st online streaming, you've got to make sure your your internet connection is proper, your microphones are proper, your uh, guests are also connected up properly into a platform, which would have the uh, virtual radio station or internet streaming radio station. Uh, we got to plan as well so that we make sure our audience engagement that we want to get, this vibe that we spoke of in many of our modules, this vibration between the guest, uh, the host, and that vibration that the, the listeners out there are expecting, that's also something that requires effective planning so that you make sure that what you would like to achieve is actually achieved. Uh, again, we look at what content we want to deliver. Planning is essential in that. And one of the areas that George had mentioned is that Life happens, and what he means by that is, I would say, uh, you got to plan for that eventuality of a crisis taking place. You hope it may not happen, but you still have to plan as if when it does happen, if it does happen, you do have a plan that will make sure that you still deliver the value that you are hoping to deliver. I mean, we've spoken in other modules as well about uh, things not working out with regards to the guest. Either there's issues that uh, uh, he says something that was not supposed to be said or he loses his nerve. We have to plan for those uh, risks, mitigate, uh, uh, realizing and having uh, plans again to mitigate those risks. And one important last aspect I wanted to just touch on was, uh, you know, although we, we would want to do digital online streaming as a passion and as a uh, you know, a potential career path. At the end of the day, you do need to also plan towards monetization. And that indeed, when you're doing your planning process, it will help you to determine what is your best strategy so that you can get content that will be able to be monetized and what model that you would want to take for you to be able to monetize those uh, the content that you're producing. So, um, in relation to planning for a new show, of course, your initial planning would have to uh, involve uh, you deciding, uh, maybe you have a co-host as well, firstly to decide whether you want a co-host, who that co-host will be, what would be the theme of your show that you want to host, where would you host that show, uh, Whether which platform would you use, what kind of technology uh, and of course, what kind of uh, time would you require as a guest or as a host on a show before you decide, okay, then uh, we want to go to the next step of looking at who the potential guests could be, Sam. I think uh, mm -hmm. the colleagues can also continue. There's a value chain which, which triggers in terms of the planning process. Uh, the initial ones, I would say, would be to determine uh, what your show would be about in terms of a theme, uh, which platform would you select to, uh, to, to partner with to deliver your show? Uh, and of course, who would that audience be who will consume your show? And then from there, you would look at other areas in terms of the value chain, Sam. Mm. As you're speaking, Divesh, I'm actually... Imagining that you are looking at a particular template there, I might be wrong, but it looks like you have in your mind or even written down a planning sheet, if I may use that, or a template, because the, the, the points you have raised are quite many. Now, I'm just imagining somebody who's learning it for the first time. Will it be helpful for any kind of a planning planning process to have a template that could guide which points do we address at what time, at what point of the planning process? 
hundred percent Sam on both counts. Uh, yes, I'm also developing my own notes so that we can, uh, you know, to the point share areas of focus to our listeners. And indeed, uh, having a template to guide you along uh, always helps. I mean, this type of thing, as George had mentioned, uh, planning has been taking place from time immemorial. It's not something that just came about now. It came about with different methodologies and techniques, but the process of planning is very, very old. So indeed, there are numerous uh, templates that one could get access to. And even in the space of AI, you've got generative AI models these days, which actually can even do the planning and help you with the whole process uh, just by you asking it to develop certain things for you, sir. Mm, mm. In the project space, I think there are such templates that you will know much better than I do. And, uh, and they were developed by people to deal with complexities, George. <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, really, it, specifically in the area of, of, of goals and, and planning, when something is written down, it has a higher probability of being achieved. You, I talk to people who tell you, oh, I have my goals, but they're in my head. Well, I can tell you, if you don't write it down, the chances of, they've actually done research, which mm -hmm. shows that uh, uh, written goals are more likely to be achieved than unwritten goals. And, in, and even when they are written, when there's an accountability partner, the higher, uh, there's, there's an even higher probability of that happening. And so, yeah, as David says, templates, you follow a specific template. That way you don't have to recreate, uh, re reinvent the wheel, as they say. It's th th there are many, many templates around. Um, Use those. And these days with AI, use that. Because mm. ultimately, it's not so much what you write down. It's at the end of the day, we will be talking about implementation. But yeah. good implementation must be backed by solid plans that are written. Mm. Mm. That sounds like you are now taking us to the next topic, which we <laughs> need to talk in the in the title of the discussion on the, the theme itself, and that is organization. Let's, let, let's talk to that. It looks like that it follows automatically that once you have a plan for you to be able to implement it, you need to get organized. Let's talk about being organization, being organized. Oh, yes. Um, that, <laughs> that's, um, uh, this organization is, is, is a recipe for absolute disaster. In fact, I, I, if I was to use an example, uh, if you take an army, yeah. you know, with the, the, because of its hierarchy and uh, uh, you follow instructions, that organization is what helps armies to succeed. Mm. If you go into a battlefield and uh, you know, where to, who gives commands, how to react when they commands, that's organization. And that's mm. how you will succeed. If everybody does what they want whenever they feel like, well, nothing is going to happen, actually. So yeah. in your business, organization is huge. What do we do at this, every morning? What, 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 so you actually have a schedule that you follow. That's how you succeed. Yeah. And now, in fact, you are you are a soccer man, uh, so you will know that tactics now in 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 so in, in in a game of soccer are huge. You can have all the skill in the world, but if you are not organized on that pitch, you get a hammering. <laughs> yeah. And and the way you organize for a league game, vis-a-vis -vis organizing for a cup game, is different. Mm. Mm. And you have to appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. So when the stakes are high, the organizing needs to be even tighter. Mm. 
So, so now let's let's now you you have a plan, Divesh, and uh, you are now implementing it. Uh, so I guess organizing will involve scheduling a briefing session with the guest. It will involve getting the date in the diary of the guest, and um, getting the CV and all things. And what more else? Well, Sam, from my perspective and from experience uh, with uh, having um, um, uh, hosted uh, numerous shows as part of the uh, uh, Cometsa Digital Online Streaming Program, uh, when we talk organization or being organized to affect uh, helping you uh, execute your plan or is even in developing the plan, uh, it will help you with regards to having clarity, uh, having focus uh, into things like the aspects you raised in terms of being able to determine how you're going to manage your own time, uh, not only the time that will be spent on the show and its life, but all the way up, up, up to the point of delivering the show, uh, being able to manage time. Uh, allocate what resources may be needed. Uh, you've got to be organized so that you can better manage your limited resources, whether they're financial resources, human resources, if you've got support within your uh, broadcasting space, whatever material may be there as well, you've got to make sure that you allocate those resources and be organized about how you use those resources. And uh, being organized as well will also help you. As I mentioned, uh, you do get risks that, that could materialize uh, along the value chain. So it doesn't matter whether it's from the technical perspective of delivering your show or whether it's from a point that there is issues with regards to the guest. Uh, there will be some risk. So you've got to be organized in your approach so that you can identify those potential risks earlier on, and then develop contingency plans to mitigate those risks. And I think we've also raised some of those potential mitigations. For example, your guest may uh, unfortunately let you down at the last moment, and you could have an alternate guest, or uh, the co-host could take over, and you make sure you still deliver a quality product to your audience. Uh, organization also would involve, I mean, these are things that as, as, as we've uh, reiterated, George has reiterated as well, um, these are applicable in various factors of life, whether it's uh, your day-to-day -day living, your relationships, your business, uh, and of course in the digital online streaming space as well. You have to track progress in terms of the goals, the actions that you've set up, and how you're performing in terms of the allocation of your resource the time you're spending in terms of those goals and actions, you've got to actually track that and you have to be organized, uh, provide probably some kind of a framework how you would monitor your progress to see whether you're actually, uh, you know, reaching where you would like to. And one of the practices that uh, Cometsa always uh, commends or recommends to, to, to people is always do check-ins. And you can also check in on those actions that you've set out for yourself to just make sure that you are tracking the progress. Uh, if you're organized, uh, Sam, and this again uh, is applicable to various aspects of life, uh, you would have improved communication, whether it's with you and your staff, you and your guest. Uh, it could be with you as well as uh, the messaging that you sent to your listeners as well. Your being organized will relay automatically to your listeners as well. And one of the important aspects which you've reiterated uh, in various uh, 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 podcasts that we've done in the past in our series, uh, being organized can definitely reduce the stress that any one of these processes can actually have on you, Sam. Mm. Mm. Oh, Indeed. Yeah. And, and you know, you must have experienced a situation where you have a great plan and this plan gets given to somebody to make sure that the team is ready to implement. Come the day of the event, a number of things are not in place. And oh. that 
that is a symptom of somebody that is not organized or a team that is not organized, irrespective of a very good plan that is in place. Indeed, Sam. That's right, Sam. Um, Indeed. Uh, the, there are a lot of the times when uh, you have a plan and everything is going according to plan, then I would be very suspicious because something has to go wrong. Then you at least be able to adapt. <laughs> then you know you've planned properly. <laughs> Okay. There must be some gremlins somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And I think, as George, you were saying, organizing then means that that's where now you start uh, 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 looking at who is who is being given what tasks. That is the who you were asking. And uh, which, who must shout the first instructions, what must be in place first. It, it, it sounds like uh, uh, the difficult part of... Uh, putting together a show is not really the planning. The difficult part is to organize it. And if the organizing is not really well executed, you are already starting to fail in terms of implementation. Absolutely. Absolutely, Seb. Uh, uh, Davis is talking about the workspace. Just ensuring that your mic is working, ensuring that the workspace is uh, for the duration of your show uh, you don't have children rushing into the room. Uh, and uh, uh, it's it's things, small things like that, reducing clutter around you. Those are so important because that's what then determines the the quality of your show. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm purposefully delaying going into this point that uh, we're we going to touch on and has spent time in unpacking these three terms. Because when you go into the pointers that we have, it's really about what could go wrong, what could mm. go well, mm. uh, which is really now the implementation. Because I think the reason why, if you, you will agree with me, why sometimes we have great plans as organizations and institutions and people that never get implemented is that George, you'll know from coaching, we don't apply our mind much to the entire value chain before we take a pick and hit the ground. You find yourself hitting the ground without having even thought about things. And then you, you once you start hitting the ground and digging the hole, it's very difficult to change anything. Yeah. In fact, you, you mentioned, as you mentioned coaching there, that um, the success of a coaching engagement really very much lies in the the pre work, uh, in 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 uh, the contracting stage. What exactly are we going to be talking about? Da, 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 da. That's where success comes in. Which, in terms of uh, the Cometa online uh, broadcasting, it's 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 things like: Have we taken into account what are we talking about? Um, the, the 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 task management, our to do lists, our calendars, who does what, are we using the right software, etc. Those are important things because when you actually do it and you have done the, this, shall we say, pre work right, then your 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 your, your event will succeed. Mm, mm. Mm. And that I think uh, this is, speaks to the point that you and I we discussed. I think a day or so where we're talking about what what we are having here is a, a product that we are now around which we are making ourselves ready for when we are we are we want to take it to the people or to the market just this show itself about train the trainer is part of that getting organized because the getting organized means also George having somebody who's competent to do all these tasks that you have identified Having to learn how you go about transferring this knowledge is becoming organized and getting ready. Organizing, it looks like the product of organizing is the readiness level. And you will know when you are ready because if if you're still missing something that you need you need for the show, what we call a tool of trade or 
even your own script or a CV of a guest that they're going to talk to. And then, and also what they call the, the run up. There's something in broadcasting they call running sheet or running thing. Then, then, then you, 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 you are not organized. So yeah, I think we've clarified the uh, the organization there. It's very good that we say you could have a good plan and be so disorganized that it sounds like you don't actually have a plan. That's so, right. That's the yeah. devil is in the in the the devil is in the detail. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I think as you said, George, it could be very minor things that you'll only discover when you are in the show that actually you should have done it. For instance, cool. just reading the CV of the guest before you read it to the audience. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I've, I've, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've had some funny experiences around that. Uh, and then just just the cat, small courtesy of saying to your guest, how do I pronounce your name? Yeah. yeah. Ahead of the show. Indeed. So that when you go in, you're pronouncing the name the way it should be pronounced. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's there are small things that are very important things. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. Great stuff. So now let's talk about implementation. And I think that means going through even all those pointers that we raised. What could what could go wrong? I mean, Georgie, you spoke about uh, removing the clutter. I think it's so this is sounds so innocent, but it's so true. Uh, as we speak, I've been looking at my table, and 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 I said, I think my table could could be much better. Now that we're talking about it, the the table could be a little bit much better. But fortunately, George and everybody else can't see it. <laughs> but uh, removing the clutter means it's almost like clearing the space in your mind, so there are no distractions uh, around you. And, and so this is a physical workspace. Is your is your workspace in such a way that you can actually do the execution? Even psychologically, George, I'm sure uh, uh, if we have things all over, we can't think straight. Is that is that is that is that? Uh, do you see that that way? The way I see it, George. Well, actually, a key a key part of any. Uh, event that you're holding, a key part is actually clearing your mind. Mm. Mm. Actually taking time to maybe meditate a little bit, uh, close your eyes, see the event in your mind. Uh, when I speak to people, I always say, close your eyes and see the event unraveling in your mind. It starts here, it goes there, it ends there. Uh, so that by the time you go in, your mind is settled. Because you can get everything else right. But if your mind is not settled, you're going to struggle in that show. Mm. As you apply your grow model, George, you will always say that uh, uh, when you talk about the last letter W, what will success look like for you? Is that that's exactly the point you are raising. You want mm. them to imagine it, imagine themselves achieving that success. And if they yes. define it, that means they are mentally now focused on it. Is that right? That's right. You see, because you, you, when, when, when something is clear in your mind and you can see it, then everything else follows. The body follows. Yes. But so you can, you can, you can, you can, you can have an imagination of a very successful show hosted by you and you see yourself say, thank you so much for coming to my show. Goodbye. We look forward to welcoming you again. <laughs> absolutely. And, and that's, that's absolutely important. You know, if I can digress a little, uh, there was way back, I think, early 1900s, there was, a, there was a girl, a young girl who was such a, she had a wonderful voice. She could sing. But she, every time they tried to put her on stage, she froze and could not. And so this one guy came to her and said, I want you for, the, for a whole week to go in front of the mirror and, say to, and keep saying, I can sing. 
I can sing. I'm going to do this. I can sing. I can sing. For a whole week, she was saying, I can sing. I can sing. I can sing. I can sing. The day they put her on stage, the whole everyone was writing about her. Because mm. by the time she got in, she could sing in her mind. She mm. could sing. Yeah. So removing the clutter is not necessarily physical. It's also the clutter in your mind. In your mind. In your mind. If there are too many thoughts that are not related to this show that you are going to host, you need to do mindfulness and meditation so that you can have the ability to to let go of those irrelevant thoughts. Yeah. That going that's going a little bit deeper. That requires a skill, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. Great. I don't know whether Andadera Muta is with us. Uh, uh, I, I've, I wanted to, him to comment on some of the points, but yeah, we'll give him more time. And, and, then, and then talk to me about prioritization, Divesh. We have too many things that are competing for our space and our times. Uh, how important is prioritization in terms of getting ready for a show? What must well, come Sam, first and how do you know, how do you go about it? One, one of the aspects, uh, firstly, Sam, uh, prioritization, definitely once you do your plan, you got to have to be able to correctly prioritize whatever actions that you've listed within your plan. When we look at the digital online streaming mastery and in particular, uh, if we say we want to uh, plan for a certain show, uh, I had mentioned one element where you firstly decide what theme your show is going to be about. But let's see, say that the the, 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 the the selection has been made in terms of what the theme of the show is. So we'll use my example when I was doing uh, the digital online streaming mastery program and uh, having my hosting my own shows, my theme there was uh, leadership experts in various sectors where we could bring in a leadership expert, uh, for example, in the electric, electric electricity space or electricity sector, and they would come in and share uh, do's and don'ts in the in the environment, uh, whether you're from a, a student perspective studying engineering in the electricity space or whether you're an SMME, a company working in that space or whether you are a potential client who needed uh, uh, the services uh, in the in the electrical sector, then you would bring in that expert to share his experience and knowledge uh, to the listeners uh, for those various uh, areas of interest. So in regards to that kind of a show, uh, firstly, of course, uh, you will decide what kind of a factor uh, you want your show to take. So whether it's going to be a, a video stream, whether it's going to be an audio stream, a podcast. Uh, once you make that decision, you would then go, as we had uh, delved into in detail in our other shows, uh, how you would go about selecting a guest. So we would then plan to select our guest through whatever mechanism we selected to actually get that guest. And then we would want to have a plan again that once we've got our guest, uh, how are we going to engage with that guest? How are we going to prepare the guest in terms of what you expect your show to deliver to your expected audience? And then have a time schedule with the guest to be able to do a mock sort of uh, show so that to also mitigate some of the potential risks that could happen while you're live on the show. And of course, you would also then plan how you would want to, uh, um, you know, uh, show appreciation for the guest and also plan what you would do post the show in terms of uh, closing any loops that uh, you might have still have uh, open. And again, part of planning would also be that how am I going to promote the show so that mm -hmm. when the show takes place, uh, we want to get as, ma as much uh, attention or 
uh, consumption of the show while it's live. And again, you must plan once you've actually done the show that the podcast is again advertised and given to the potential consumers of the show. So there's various elements of planning uh, and, and, and we would want to use uh, tools as well to make sure that once you've got a good solid plan, uh, you can track that across a platform, uh, whether it's a template, whether it's an electronic tool, like a, a project planning kind of tool, then you can actually mitigate some of the risks by using these tools to be able to track progress of your execution of those specific tasks within your plans. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. This is, and, and, and I think I'm sure Divesh, you will agree with me that the flow that you have just exposed us to, it is something that you have lived it and you have internalized it. And it is actually natural uh, that, that, that you can actually uh, 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 list them. But at the back of your mind, you already have a sequential way of looking at it. Even if you jump something, you will probably pick it up a couple of hours late, later because you, and, and I think that's what we are always saying that anybody can be in the studio and start talking and hosting the show. But, but what you don't see is, is, is the, is the, is the flow that the the person who's putting together the show is following, which is not a hard to do thing, but it is almost uh, he has embedded himself in there. So from learning it to doing it to actually executing it in terms of prioritization, it becomes natural. And then I think we, when we will listen to people uh, who are streaming. We have a tendency of thinking that is very easy until you are actually asked to do it. Right. Then you realize that actually it's not as easy as we think. And that's why this kind of a program and kind of a, of a, of a show that we are hosting is so important to conscientize people. And I guess a lot is happening more in the mind than when you are really doing it in that Ramut. I, I'm sure that Ramuta is having some challenges there. Yeah, but that is how I feel. As you were as you were speaking, Divesh, I was just actually enjoying the flow with which you are doing it because it tells me that that is something that you are you have embedded into your system. Even the prioritization it doesn't become a big of an issue if you jump one step. You could easily pick it up because you will your your own system will actually let, tell you no. I haven't done something here. Yes, uh, Brother Sam, I must be open and honest and I must give gratitude to Kometsa. The do's and don'ts that we are trying to share with our listeners and especially if we embark on the formal program uh, or digital online streaming mastery program, that do's and don'ts and with the practice that we also uh, advise our listeners or participants or students uh, that uh, would be uh, embarking on the journey with Kometsa, you will then be able to move, as we've said in, in our previous modules, that you go from levels of competency to higher levels. And this mental picture that you speak of, indeed, as much as I've got experience with managing projects and uh, within the space of being an engineer, we do practice a lot of these things that we're speaking about. That mental picture that uh, you did uh, speak of does get inculcated as you progress through the levels of, uh, of competency uh, from the do's and don'ts to the practicing of the do's and don'ts to making mistakes and learning from those mistakes uh, to areas where uh, you get an external part person, a coach, a mentor to be able to assist you and guide you to be able to identify where you've gone wrong with regards to your planning or your execution of your plan. 
you'd then be able to build this mental picture in your head. So that plan uh, that we said, which may not may or may not be uh, something that's written down and you're following it to the, to the T, uh, could actually become embedded in your mind as a mental picture. And as you may be doing some action, whether it's talking, uh, engaging with someone, making sure you give the right type of language, the right type of attention, right type of listening to everything that the guest may be even saying, and already in your mind, in that mental picture, your plan is actually executing and you are uh, keeping track of how this plan executes in your mind. And if something goes wrong, another picture would pop into your mind as, as if it's a project plan itself to tell you, okay, this has happened and this is the route we need to take now. And our brain is such a beautiful tool that while we're listening attentively and we're also planning in terms of what we're going to ask next, depending on what the guest has said, and keeping in mind uh, our audience, which is also is expecting certain things uh, that you need to channel to them. Your project plan or your plan for your whole show is actually playing out in your mind as a mental picture. Yeah, yeah, spot on. So you can have a script, but if it's if if it's not in inside your mental system, it's going to be very strenuous. You can't keep on looking at the script all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let, let's talk to. The, now that we, we, we dealt with the prioritization, let's, let's talk, George, to the importance of scheduling and mastering your to-do list. I mean, you did mention that, that you know, it, it, planning is about assigning uh, responsibilities. And, but the, at the end of the day, uh, once you have decided who's going to do what, and that to-do list becomes almost the, like the, the mini plan. So you've taken your whole plan and every one of us has to-do list. And uh, before George has exhausted his to-do list of uh, maybe clearing the studio, the host can't even walk into the studio and start with their to-do list. And that is that is really uh, uh, where now, when you have a self-directed team and everybody understands how their tasks fit into the bigger scheme. And they, they, they even have, in fact, if you go into some of these broadcast houses, you don't find anybody producing to do lists for anybody. Everybody else knows that this is things, one, two, three must be in place for the next person to come in and take the show to the next level. But what happens if the, we are not good at at, at actually mastering and scheduling of our availability and other people's availability. And uh, also we are not mastering our to-do list. You know, you have a lot of things hanging in. You don't have a planner or you don't have uh, a way of uh, knowing what needs to come first. And then, of course, if you judge, you don't mind, you could also bring in the... the the tools which are becoming almost a nuisance, if I may use that word, because there are some of them imposed on us. Somebody will say, listen, I don't bring a, a notepad. I've got my digital notepad. Just just, just send me an email. I'll have it on my digital notepad. So so that that sticks to the AI you know, about. The yes. Ah, so. <laughs> Well, guys are beginning to use that a lot. But uh, talking of to-do lists, whether you do it electronically or the good old fashioned uh, uh, list, it talks to the points that Devish was 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 talking about. Being very clear what comes first, and then prioritizing. Uh, in the old days, uh, the people would talk about there was a what was his name, uh, Stephen Covey, at the time. Time management metrics. I'm sure if you remember that yes. with the four quadrants, yeah. with the four, what sits in quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. Get yourself into a habit of doing things like that. So for our show, 
what are the what sits in quadrant one for our show what sits in quadrant two quadrant three quadrant four what are the things that must happen for this show to happen mm. what are the things that are, are are not urgent and not important what are mm. the things that are urgent and important what are the things that are not urgent but very very important our show depends on this thing to happen yeah and so classifying that as as and so ideally if you're working with a co presenter it makes it easier because you can split the duties if you're working on your own then this these things of of creating uh, a matrix will help you will help you much much better and is that it, with ai all these tools are now available uh, these youngsters yeah. i'm sure can tell you uh which ones are best but that's 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 the way to go really to help you with the planning because the actual presentation itself is probably a, a smaller percentage of what needs to happen but it yeah sure it it, it determines the tone at the end of the day but the 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 flow is determined by the planning and what happens in terms of prioritizing and following our own to-do lists. Mm. What could go wrong? What, what, what caused this organization in a failure to do what we had intended to do or a failure to produce the quality that we had intended to produce and achieve the objectives that we have set ourselves to achieve? Because as professionals, we don't need to be told. You will know. But do you know what could go wrong? Well, as, my... as Dinesh was saying, that something will go wrong. But what could what could go wrong? Well, not not talking about the aspect of risks that you identify in terms of things going wrong. The one that you uh, would would firstly have to deal with is that if you don't do appropriate and proper planning, uh, that's definitely going to allow something to go wrong. Uh, the as aspects of digital online streaming, uh, things that could go wrong, you could have load shedding and your whole online platform goes down. Uh, you could use a, a, a microphone which is not good enough and it causes a lot of background noise and it's, in, in, and it's in a nuisance to the guest. Likewise, the guest could be using equipment that's not appropriate and it affects uh, the quality of the product, and uh, your network couldn't be. It could be not good enough, and then it causes disturbances. It you could be talking, and the guests and the 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 co-host and the the audience they can't hear much of what you're saying. Uh, one of the bigger ones, which I mentioned earlier, is that you could have a plan, and then the guest itself doesn't actually uh, show up on the show. And you got to actually mitigate that risk in some manner or form. And uh, of course, uh, you could have a guest who turns out to be less than you had researched and doesn't necessarily share the value that you had hoped for or actually uh, doesn't abide to the value propositions that your, your, your show offers to your guests or to your, to your audience as well as the values that the channel that you're using is actually abiding by. So that as well could be things that could go wrong, Sam. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. And, and I, I guess it's a very healthy practice to, to, to play out that as a way of just preparing your mind so that when something like that happens, it's not a shock in your system. Well, yeah, most shows, uh, as, as David has said, you know something will, will happen. Um, and so in your planning, you try and do as many plan Bs as possible. Uh, that, that, that is very, very important. Um, what if this happens? What can we do? Uh, so if we talk of load shedding, uh, you'd have your own backup battery for, for, for that. If load shedding happens, 
you 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 will back up and 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 use uh, solar or whatever you have planned for 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 that and and even moving the times of your program so if if your load shedding is happening at specific times then you might actually have to move the program to a more convenient time yeah yeah beautiful but but that's we are saying that uh, uh um we are we are human and things do happen and i guess we are saying that uh, a minimal plan and anticipation of things going wrong is the is the minimum you must have so that you are able to bounce back when it happens rather than being shocked as if you never anticipated anything going wrong right you will even be able to know how to react when something like that happened. And I guess uh, our daily lives are faced with those kind of common type of problems that we shouldn't stop, we shouldn't continue using them ex- as excuses. If you're going to meet somebody across the other side of town, you know that uh, it's not a smooth drive through the city. So then instead of leaving uh, an hour earlier, you leave two hours earlier. Uh-huh. So, that's the thing. That's yeah. the thing. You've got to mitigate those those possibilities. Yeah, yeah. You are not helpless. You can actually, you can actually be ready for these things. Um. Yeah. So that that could go wrong, uh, and those are the things that could go wrong. What kind of discipline must we practice as professionals and as a host of shows? Uh, uh, as a way of 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 being, uh, especially if you are uh, uh, not just a, a host, but you are also involved in putting together a show. What kind of discipline do you think we must uh, we must uh, bring into ourselves? Remember we talked about some weeks ago, I can't remember when exactly, about the issue of, of, of brand, that your show is a brand, and you are a brand. And mm-hmm. so the, 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 the utmost level of professionalism is demanded of you. Mm-hmm. Once, once you set out on a path of hosting that show, you have told the audience that uh, you are up to scratch and that you're going to be able to do it. Mm. And so it requires the highest level of professionalism. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that. Uh, yeah, you, you can't have your audience uh, not being sure of what you bring to the table. Mm. So the, the margin of error needs to be very as small as, small as possible. Especially when it's coming to the product. Because it's your brand, Sam. And your brand must speak. Yeah, you, you can have a show that is disruptions, that's disorganized, etc. Then that becomes your brand. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And indeed, and that is, that is, a, that is a, a negative brand. Very negative. Mm. There's a point that is being raised that says uh, 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 one discipline is, that you can practice is uh, is making organization a way of life for you. I like that because again, it's a behavioral thing. If you're inviting people to come to your house for dinner, you better be organized that mm. there is going to be a dinner. You can't say. Hey, uh, this kind of things is not me. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you must have been at the, at at dinners that uh, you 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 know you are invited, and you you can tell that uh, maybe it's one member of the house uh, of the couple that has driven for it to happen, and the other one has not really been doing their part, and. Uh, you, you said, sure, I wish they, they didn't invite us to come to the house. Could have maybe gone to the restaurant. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, and <laughs> this that, that comes with planning. They must, they should plan way ahead of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and actually, I've, I I have I have experienced. You know, it's easy to invite people, but on the day when I have experienced that situation, you find that maybe the madam is busy in the house in the kitchen, and I'm telling you, the day before that dinner, the man is driving up and down the whole town getting things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and if there is that organization and allocation of things, is in them, in their nature. And when you come in, the boys are prying and somebody is uh, setting the tables and somebody is making sure that there's parking for the guests to arrive. It's a joy to watch, George, without actually trying to be always too critical when you are invited for dinners. <laughs> and that's organization. That really, that's hosting an event is 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 serious business, Sam. Um, and you, there will always be one or two things that go wrong. But if overall, at the end of the day, you have given it hundred percent, and as I always say to 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 people, if you're hosting an event, if you can walk away and say I gave it one hundred and twenty percent, sure, one or two things may have gone wrong, then you've done well. Mm. You it you shouldn't be at a place where it, it's, uh, it's avoidable things happen. No, plan properly uh, and host the event when you are ready. <laughs> Otherwise, don't do the radio show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and I think as well, what yes, yes Sam and George, what I also think is important is, is whenever you do make mistakes, whenever something goes wrong, document them and also uh, learn from them so that when you encounter a similar situation uh, again, you would be able to uh, um, um, handle that uh, in a better way or even when you do your planning, you plan better so that risk doesn't materi uh, materialize again. Mm -hmm. oh. I must tell you, uh, thanks for raising that, George uh, and Diyash, that organizing events is an ongoing learning learning opportunity. There's no event that you will not learn anything from it. Ongoing learning opportunity, and as 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 as, as Devish has said, review review. Once you have done the event, sit back and say, "What did we do right? What did we do wrong?" What could we have done better? And uh, review it because that's you, you, it's learning. You've done your show, you review it. You, the next show, by the time you're doing show number five, these reviews will help you polish it, polish it, remove things that are, didn't quite add value, bring in new things. Ongoing review, ongoing review. Mm -hmm. So we we are actually saying that hosting a show is an event. You just have to happen to be doing it the, in terms of a show. People are the people that are attending your event. They log in, but before that, you you have been doing eventing. It's an event, and the main idea is here. That there are Mudla will also tell you that uh, when we used to organize events for organizations, the most stressful thing because you are judged on the quality of your event as to whether you are organized or not, and people will actually verbalize it. You guys are not organized. <laughs> Sometimes you wish to ask them, what do you mean by, do you understand what you mean by being organized? But they actually, that's, that is, that they basically say, you planned it very well, that's why you invited us. But what went wrong is you did not organize well or you did not execute well. Implementation. So with a show, uh, like the shows we run, these are online streaming. You have lost the opportunity because uh, uh, it's gone. You know, uh, of course, you can always learn, and improve the next one. But sometimes, every show has got its own unique, unique uh, attributes. That's why sometimes we, in the past, when we were still learning, we had to repeat some of the units because we made. It, made, it was not so well done to a point that it affected the podcast, which is the byproduct. 
Um, and, and you reviewed and you learned from it. <laughs> of course. I'm telling you, as, as Divesh was saying, we can't take it for granted that we are now at unit number 31 from unit one. There is a lot of learning. I mean, you, if we had a way of tape me of measurement, uh, uh, mm -hmm. but the measurement is in the, in the, in the experience that we, even we ourselves, we don't have to be told by anybody. We know when you have done something wrong and you know how to improve it. Even, even George, the, the way we are holding the conversation is informed by our Lakota methodology, which is a, yeah. which we have a theory you can learn. But the the, the 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 beauty of it is in the in experiencing the effectiveness of it. That's right. That's right. The experience is important. Mm. Mm. You know, we talk a lot when the Dramutla and Lerabula uh, about Lekhotla. But but you have to be in a Lekhotla to experience it its effectiveness. It's it's unbelievable. It's because it guards against the normal uh, normal human disruptions that are in all of us, you know? And, 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 and you see how people, when they are given a platform, fully knowing that nobody's going to interfere, disrupt until they are finished. You see the quality that comes out of those people as they are on the platform. But if you are in a situation where there is no Lokotla methodology which bring a discipline to allow a person to oh. speak to finish, you can see people are never studied. Hey, before I finish my second sentence, I know somebody's going to disrupt and tell me I'm told, I'm talking I'm talking rubbish. So you immediately then you are only telling yourself that I'm not safe here. It's <laughs> safe space, same. <laughs> Indeed. People are at their best when some of these philosophy and principles are being applied, and 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 you really you learn a lot. Uh, obviously, you, we don't, as we are hosting this conversation, we don't keep on bringing it up to say we are actually informed by that methodology, which is a methodology that uh, allows us to learn to be good listeners. But it also allows us to learn to be very good in articulating our point of views. And we are given a space to keep on improving because we not we don't get judged and we don't get pressurized. We are allowed to evolve. But you can only do it in a series like this, as Divesh was saying. But then when it becomes your way of being in a real situation where people now are having you hosting their show, it's a joy. And that's why they will then call you an expert. They don't know the journey you travel, but they just enjoy the way mm -hmm. you are covering the matter. So there is a school fees you pay to get to a level of mastery. Divesh? Yes, Sam, and uh, although there's school fees, uh, the rewards uh, could be tremendous, especially, you know, when you put in that hard work, pay the school fees, um, and actually grow as an individual. So it can be for various purposes that one would want to take the digital online streaming journey. It could be just to share knowledge skills with the list, listeners out there, uh, be altruistic, but the uh, majority of the online streamers would want to monetize that, uh, that skills and knowledge and entertainment value that they want to share. So indeed, uh, you got to plan for that ultimate goal, whether it's altruistic goal or whether it's a monetary value or whether it's fame and, 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 and glory. Uh, that you would want to reach, the planning is very important as well in knowing where you would ultimately like to end up, Sam. And uh, cool. Maynard, welcome to you. Uh, I hope you have uh, managed to uh, catch up with the, the the spirit of our conversation. And then I have uh, uh, Umpile commending that... Uh, He's listening on via his laptop. Uh, his contribution is that uh, 
It is a very good session. Planning is a very critical thing to achieving goals. I think that's the point we raised at the oh. beginning of the show. Welcome, Maynard. Uh, 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 I know you came a bit late, but I hope you have gained something so far. Yes, no, thanks so much, Mr. Man. Good evening, colleagues, and apologies for being late. Uh, yeah, I had some other things that I was caught up at. But nevertheless, indeed, the event planning is, is, is a quite complex thing to do because, like, it involves a lot of things as well. Uh, I think I've involved myself into a lot of event planning and yeah, I, I can say it's a tedious exercise that needs uh, attention as well. But uh, the minute you do most of the event planning, you, you end up getting used to it because I think I've, I've done few into the events and uh, even into the, the uh, wedding planning. I've done also a few for that and I'm telling you the, the stress and the pressure that you take for planning, it's, it's immense. And yeah, you need to be at your strongest point to to pull through such kind of plannings. And yeah, indeed, again, uh, our shows are more, more like uh, planning as well, because before the, any other show, you need to be organized. You need to make sure that you've got all your guests together and you briefed everyone. So it, it, it works almost the same as well. That is him? Mm. Absolutely. Um... And, and as as George was saying, uh, whether you like it or not, at the end of the show, people will talk about it and they will put mm. you at the center of it. Absolutely. Mm. So this this type of business that we are preparing people in, it has got its own risk. It is fulfilling as well because if it has been very good, they will also talk about you from a from pricing point of view. So the, 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 the incentive is high. Emotionally, it's, it's always pleasing to hear people saying, wow, what a show. We have really gained something. That I'm with. I, I thought that Dr. Muta wanted to come in there. Yeah, so, yes, so, um, yes, Dr. Uh, for the whole show, is as I've been listening, uh, there is confirmation that uh, planning, organizing, and implementation are critical aspects of successful digital, digital online streaming. Mm -hmm. And that uh, mm -hmm. proper, uh, the, these three concepts are interrelated because uh, proper planning informs successful organization and perfect inf implementation. And um, mm. I think I agree with Brasem that you, we must make organization the way of life for ourselves. Because if we, we, if we organize properly, then we, will, we shall have uh, uh, planned properly and we will imp implement properly. And I agree with... Uh, uh, with George that there, there must be review uh, processes because then we'll be able to improve on areas that you have not, you will first identify those, those areas and improve on them. Yes, Brassem, you are taking us back to the Lohota experiences. Indeed, uh, these three uh, components of um, uh, digital online streaming played a very important time during our Lakota period. Because um, when we check in, uh, the, the person is going to undertake during the check-in form by playing. And, uh, and when we are into teams, uh, we implement what we shall have uh, learned from the plenary. And then when we go back, uh, it, it's, 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 it's time for us to give feedback, but give us the opportunity to reflect and review yeah. oh, we're losing about the what. Yes. And then mm. I agree with this plan. Mm. You, you plan with an ultimate goal and uh, you you achieve success when you shall have achieved the, the, the goals that you shall have uh, planned for. Thanks. Beautiful, beautiful. 
Uh, was that you are checking out as well? I'm looking at time that there are mudra. Let's, let's check out colleagues. Uh, thank you so much. Valuable input and insights indeed. And I, I'm sure the, the podcast is going to be valuable to, to those who want to catch up with what we have discussed here. This is, this is absolutely very important and applies across the board. Let, let's check out George. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Uh, it's always uh, uh, invigorating yeah, to, to, to participate in these uh, sessions. And planning um, organization implementation is such a critical, critical aspect of any uh, event. Uh, it, is, it is the, that's when the rubber hits, hits the road, as they, as they say. And it's something that meticulous planning usually leads to successful events. Mm -hmm. And so wh wh whoever is listening to say, whenever, if you're going to host your own show, it is in the planning. That's where everything mm -hmm. happens. And uh, the, the, the processes that uh, Devish was referring to, the sequence, you do that right your show will be a success. And uh, it's, it's continuous learning. Sometimes you will make those mistakes, but the question is, what have you learned from it? How can you improve? And eventually you will have a first-class show. And of course, it enhances your brand. So yeah, thank you very much for listening. Beautiful. Thank you, George, for all your valuable input and reflections. We really appreciate that. Uh... Indeed. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, Divesh? Yes, thank you, Sam. Thank you once again for a very insightful and engaging show. Uh, I would like to just end with uh, a proverb or two which summarizes what we've discussed today. Uh, the one classic one is that uh, failing to plan is planning to fail. Mm. Uh, that one is emphasizing the importance of planning for success in terms of the goals that you set and then the other one i would like to share is a goal without a plan is just a wish so it hi highlights the necessity of planning to turn your aspirations into reality thank you sam wow beautiful nuggets indeed thank, thank you so much uh, i love it may not uh, short as you might you have been with us i'm sure you want to say your closing remarks no, it's fine, Darisema. Thanks so far, dear. Wrap it up. Thank you so much. Adara Mutla? Uh, diverse made me think, and I want to say to you, if you don't know where you come from, any road will lead you anyway. So, <laughs> well, if you, your planning is informed by the previous projects that you have done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your planning is informed by your previous projects and indeed when we say there must be a template yeah, this template is informed by um, our our experiences of the previous projects and finally obviously we need to pro to take notes and prioritize because we cannot do everything at the same time thanks right beautiful wow that <laughs> i love that one <laughs> any road will take you anyway <laughs> beautiful beautiful thank you so much colleagues i really loved this this was beautiful yeah wow uh ladies and gentlemen we've come to the end and uh, let me entice you and ask you to join us next tuesday as we will be looking at uh, unit number 32 Conduct number 27, knowing you are guests. Beautiful, beautiful. We are going into specifics now. This is not, not searching for a guest, knowing the guest that is going to come into your studio. 
understand them in in depth and we're going to look at what we call social intelligence uh, a course that will give us themes to talk about it you might we might have realized that we bring themes but we don't just re, uh, read the themes we interpret them in the context of our digital online streaming mastery show the train the trainer version because uh, edition because this is the edition that we are going to take over to to capacitate other people who want to come into this uh, space, uh, highlighting the do's and don'ts. We are getting closer and closer to unit number 40. Thank you so much. Uh, That was uh, Commercial Radio Worldwide, The Mind, The Journey, The Destiny. The show is based on the principle called the idea. We inform and entertain, develop and educate, empower and support associate and network. That's the idea. I was joined by the our resident co-host, George Mutenda Zamera, Divesh Motilal, Franz Ramutla, Maynard Maisela, and at the distance, Ompilele Pile, who could not come into the studio, but was listening on his uh, uh, laptop and he's been able to share some few inputs with us. As always, the podcast will be available, so you can you can actually listen and share it with many more people. It's available at insightsonlinepodcast.com, insightsonlinepodcast.com. You can get it at Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And then, of course, if you want to be part of this uh, family, join us as a member at commercialmember.com. You can apply online there and uh, yeah, be part of this uh, holistic human capital development journey. Thank you so much, colleagues. Thank you as always. It's been beautiful. It's only time we don't have. Otherwise, we could carry on and on because this is the stuff that inspires us and we thrive on it. And this is our contribution to building a progressive society. You take care and goodbye.